Hello everybody, welcome to another episode of Euro Truck Simulator 2, where we try to build a trucking empire to dominate Europe, starting from scratch and without allowing ourselves to use any loans in the game. If you tuned into the last mat, the last episode, we were trying to complete the uh, Along the Black Sea achievement by doing routes from Istanbul to Burgas, Burgas to Verna, Verna to Mangalia, and then Mangalia to Constantia. We got half of it done, but I've been struggling to find these routes in here. So I've been able to do one, but haven't been able to do the other. So we're going to abandon that. And instead, I want to do a little bit of a landmark tour. So the other day, I was in uh, Idirne down here, and I saw a statue in the middle of a rotary, this one here. And I thought, hmm, that's funny, because now none of the the landmarks are in the Wikipedia online for the game. So I thought, well, that looks like one. So I took a picture of it. And it was a picture of two guys wrestling, as you can see. And I was like, what the heck? Why is there two guys wrestling there? So this episode, we're going to do some investigative journalism and talk a little bit about why there is a statue of two guys wrestling in the middle of a rotary in Edirne, Turkey. So, Turkey. so stick around and we will get started. We do have our truck here all loaded up. It is going to be mostly a night run, unfortunately just because of the way that everything's worked out. We've got a big truckload of something. <laughs> I forget what it was. I know there's a way to look that up, but I, I'm not quite sure. It is a little bit after 1.30 in the morning. And let's get started here and get out onto the road. We are obviously in some kind of a shipyard in Constantine, driving down and out. So should be a pretty, looks like about a seven hour route and I still never quite sure what we're going to see or run into here in terms of uh, traffic and challenges in, in this route. But it is a route that we've done before. We will have, I think, two border crossings to slow us down a little bit. So that'll be something to, to consider as we go. But looking forward to the drive. It looks like overcast skies and no rain. So as we get onto the highway, we'll, um, we'll get going. We'll talk a little bit about what we're able to find out about this statue in Adirne. So... We just crossed the border from Romania into Bulgaria. We'll have to cross into Turkey in a little while, but let's chat a little bit about the statue in the middle of the rotary there. This was pretty cool. So I had no idea why there was wrestlers there. It turns out that wrestling is a thing in Turkey. Now, not just any kind of wrestling. Get this, olive oil wrestling. Now maybe everybody out there knows this and I'm the first one making this discovery. But olive oil wrestling, where Turkish men strip down except for these shorts that are called kizbits, and they go basically from their waist to their kneecaps, and they smother themselves in olive oil to make it really hard for their opponent to grab them, and then they wrestle. And in Edirne, Turkey, actually, since 1362, for last year's version was the 658th version running of this tournament, there's a massive tournament that goes on every year, and... It's the oldest running sporting events in the world, according to the Guinness Book of World Records. Now, interestingly enough, it's supposed to happen every year in July. And this year, because of COVID-19, it has been postponed until September. And they're still not sure if it's going to happen or not. So this, I don't know if that's going to jeopardize the record or not. But yeah, we'll have to see what happens there. Because Turkey is having a little bit of struggles now with the uh, coronavirus. So the history behind it is really cool, too, because it goes back to the Ottoman Empire. So back in the 1300s, the Ottoman Empire was just beginning to kind of to rise to prominence. And there were troops campaigning in what is now in Greece at that point in time. And apparently like 40 of these troops were kind of just sitting there and stuck in this one part of Greece. And to kind of entertain themselves, they decided to have a wrestling tournament. And so they all wrestled off against each other and stuff like that. And at the end, there were two wrestlers who, no matter what they did, neither one could beat the other. They were clearly the best wrestlers, and they just couldn't beat each other. So they said, okay, you guys got to have a rematch in Adrianople, in Adrianople, which is actually the modern-day city now of Edirne. And so then they came back, and if, I don't know if it was a few months later or a little while later, they came back to have a rematch. And the two wrestlers squared off against each other in the morning, and they wrestled throughout the whole day, and neither one could beat the other. So eventually, all the, it kind of nightfall, and all the soldiers got basically bored. They're like, dude, and they just fell asleep. And they woke up the next morning, and they found the two wrestlers dead. They had basically wrestled themselves to death until they had a heart attack. Now, most people are probably thinking like, well, okay, that, that's kind of sad. 
but apparently these Ottoman Empire soldiers decided, wow, we should have a wrestling tournament every year to celebrate this. So that, that was the thinking, and that's the start of it. Now, it's kind of floated around for different places for quite a while. And then in, like, in 1923, it was where Turkey decided to kind of centralize it in this yeah. town of Edirne. And since then, it's gone on. So we'll drive on a little bit more. Um, and apparently wrestling, too, was you know, it was a thing in the Ottoman Empire. Like the sultans would wrestle and it was good. So that was what enabled to keep going. And then eventually it became kind of internationalized. And even after the fall of the Ottoman Empire, wrestling still was able to keep up in popularity and the tournament was able to keep still running and stuff. So that's a little bit of the history of the tournament. We'll uh, drive a little bit more and then we'll talk a little bit about the current tournaments that are going on, which is a pretty interesting story, like how they work and things like that. And then, of course, when we get to Edirne, we'll drop off our our load here and then we'll go find the statue and take a picture with the truck beside it as we usually do with our um, landmark tours. So we'll be back in a little bit as we get maybe about uh, three and a half, four hours away from Edirne and uh, we'll chat a little bit more about the Kirkpinar wrestling tournament. So the sun has come up. It's a little bit after six o'clock in the morning. We drove through the night and we've got about three, a little bit over three, a little bit, about three and a half hours left in our journey. I wanted to talk a little bit too about what's going on with the tournament now because it's, it's, it, they're pretty interesting. So these tournaments that happen every year in Adirne, the Kirk Pinar uh, wrestling tournament, uh, over 2,000 wrestlers participate. I think last year there was about 2,400 wrestlers. It was the biggest one ever. They have all different weight categories and age brackets. As young as like 12 years old, I think, is in their wrestling as well. They wrestle in a big field, and there's a ref that watches each match, and they determine who's the winner. And there's a festival. There's music. The thing goes on for about a week, as far as I understand it. There's all kinds of rituals and pomp and circumstance that surround it because this is, again, an event that's steeped with over 600 years of tradition. Apparently, in the course of the week, they go through over two tons of olive oil that they douse on these wrestlers, which is a heck of a lot of olive oil. Now, like in that historical story, apparently... Up until just a, a number of years ago, they didn't have a time limit on the individual matches. So some of these matches could actually, and especially in the, the higher age, the age brackets, like the, the open age brackets, they could go on for days. And it wasn't until uh, more recently that they set a 40-minute time limit. I think there's like a 15-minute extension that goes with it, too. So you have this time limit on the matches now so that they can't go on that long. And apparently the, the ref then decides who wins based on points and stuff like that. It's super intricate, too. There are apparently over 350 legal moves and, like, a number of illegal moves you can make as well. So all kinds of different ways. And there's a number of ways you can win. You can win by kind of pinning your opponent on their back. You can carry them five steps. Um, if your opponent sits, then they lose, which I thought was kind of interesting. And your opponent could also yield, too. So it could be the case where... Your opponent just kind of says, I give up. You've beaten me. Now, here's the fun that <laughs> this part. You might notice in some of these pictures that I'm putting up here now, something that caught me a little bit by surprise. I was like, hold up a minute. <laughs> Let's zoom in here. That picture looks a little bit odd to me. <laughs> and then you find more pictures like that. And I was kind of going, hmm, excuse me. Something's a little bit here. Well, it turns out there's another way to win. It's um, ripping the kisbet, those, sh those leather shorts, off of your opponent. So I guess that would explain why the tournament isn't like popular on TV. At least I've never seen it on TV because <laughs> I'm not quite sure how you'd say. And we have a winner. Or we have a wiener. I mean, <laughs> I couldn't resist. <laughs> that was pretty funny. So anyway, there you have it. That's the story of the Kirk Pina Wrestler Tournament, the oldest sporting event, the oldest continuously running sporting event in the world held every year in the city that we're going to right now. We're about two and a half hours away, so we will go there. And if we see the rotary uh, on the way to... Our drop off, we'll stop and take a picture then. Otherwise, we'll drop the stuff off and then just take the cab over and then take a, a screenshot in front of the rotary there. So looking forward to checking it out again. And maybe you can go there in the game and see it um, kind of thing. And I'm kind of surprised, too, because there does appear to be a good number of landmarks in the game for Turkey and Romania. But they're not all in the Wikipedia for the game because there are no landmarks listed for Turkey in the Wikipedia. So I tried to put this one up, but for whatever reason, I couldn't make a post. I don't know if it just doesn't let anybody do it or something like that or I didn't have the right mojo or something like that I'm not sure 
So we are about an hour and a half away. We're at the border to Turkey now from Bulgaria. And the border from Bulgaria to Turkey is pretty intense. But the one from Romania to Bulgaria was like two guys in a booth. So this has got all these elaborate stations and stuff like that. Turkey takes their security seriously in this game. So we're about uh, 40 minutes outside of Adirne now. It's mid-morning, about 9.45, and uh, pretty uneventful trip. We did have one truck that uh, cut us off in a very creative way, but I anticipated it, so we didn't run into them. There were a couple of other random facts that I remembered I was thinking about that it might be fun to talk about for some of the little bit of the drive left here. The first is, uh, do, the, do the winners get money and stuff like that? Like, are these professionals? And the champion gets the equivalent of roughly 10,000 US dollars. Yeah, for winning it and gets his gold belt. But apparently you don't get to keep the gold belt unless you win for three years in a row. Then you get to keep the gold belt as well as the prize money, which is kind of an interesting tradition. And the other thing that it struck me is like, okay, hold up a minute. Why olive oil? <laughs> like, I can see these guys that, okay, let's wrestle. But, you know, it's another step to say, let's smother each other with olive oil and wrestle and have someone say, oh, yeah, good idea, and then have everybody do that. Um, so I think there's still a little bit of uh, kind of mystery behind that. But apparently, one thing to note is that there is a lot of olive oil in this country where we're driving. Turkey is the fourth largest producer of olive oil in the world. And there was some stuff I read that apparently um, it was used as kind of a mosquito repellent. A repellent. Apparently, there was a lot of malaria in the area, especially in ancient times when the Romans were coming through here and stuff like that. So it was used to repel mosquitoes. And I guess if you're wrestling, then it would make sense to have that on you because if you're stripping down to wrestle to just kind of in your shorts, well, then you're going to need some kind of bug repellent. So it may have been some connection like that that's led it to be used in in wrestling today. So. Couple, just a couple random more facts that were kind of bouncing around in my head and some of the stuff that I read looking at this. So, We are in the outskirts of Adirne now, and we should, I'm curious to see, I think the statue might be actually just right up here. Uh, Got to stop for yellow in this game. I think the statue might be right up ahead here. I'm not sure. We'll go find it if we're not on the way. We're still 11 minutes away, so we'll check in in a few minutes. It's just a couple of minutes after we stopped at that light. Here is our landmark right in front of us. So it's in the middle of the rotary as you enter town, and you can see there's the two the two guys wrestling. And let's we got some trucks behind us, but I don't think they'll mind. Let's stop right about here, I think. And none of these drivers will mind. Let's take a screenshot here with our truck. Oh, perfect. Oop, <laughs> we get the guy's butts. Uh, let's let's fix that a little bit. We don't want we don't need a butt shot, especially if they happen to have their thing already taken off or something. Let's go over to the side here. This will be a little bit better. Let's try this. Yeah, that's gonna be nice. Here we go. There we go. Screenshot taken. Let's exit this mode. Let's get back into drive. And get in the truck. We gotta go around here. There is a motorcycle there somewhere. There he is. I think this is where the cars run into us. Ah, we made it. Good. Okay. So we'll uh we're a couple minutes away, we'll touch base as we're parking it, but got a nice screenshot of that too, so photographic evidence that we've been here. We are here. We've made it. 90 XP, but we're yawning and tired. Oh, but that's easy. Let's do it. The risk of a fine for being sleepy, because we can go around the backside here and grab this. We'll be back in a sec. Okay, I think if we get this lined up right and we be a little bit aggressive with the curb here, we can get this really quickly. Right about here. Stop. Just overshot it a little bit, didn't we? We gotta go this way. So pull it back. See if we can adjust. Oh, there's not much room to adjust on this one, is there? Let's straighten out. Okay, might have to play with this a little bit. 
Bingo. Oh, they really were generous there. Lock this in. So <laughs> we're getting yawny and sleepy. So how'd we do? What'd we get here? 6,000, 6,007, 9,679, 700 experience. Still on level 21. We're going to be here for a while. But that gives us, I think, 100 and... How much money do we have right now? 138,000. Oh, I think we'll buy a truck next episode. So we'll sort things out. I'm not sure what we'll do next. There's one more historical tour, kind of a landmark tour I want to do while we're here in uh, Eastern Europe. But I'll, I'm going to figure out what to do for the next episode. Not quite sure yet what it is. We'll always be looking out for some of those Orient Express routes or to try to finish up that uh, road along the Balkans there, along the Balkan Sea, so along, along the Black Sea, sorry. But thanks so much for tuning in. If you've enjoyed the episode, please uh, please let me know in the comments or thumbs up. And if you're new, please consider subscribing. Um, I kind of enjoy making these little history things, but I always know they might be kind of geeky. I'm not sure how they appeal, if they appeal to a, a wide range of people. But um, if you do go to the game and see, if you're playing the game and you go there and you see that as well, let me know. That'd be kind of cool. Have a great day, everybody, and we'll see you in the next episode. Thanks for stopping in.